The following message is a production of Tony Broom Ministries. One of the most wonderful things of the Christian life is the presence of God. And I'm delighted to be able for us to share God's Word together about God's presence. The message is entitled, Presence Characteristics. The characteristics of the presence of God. How wonderful His presence is. His presence means so much that Moses said, If your presence does not go with me, I don't even want to go. I need your presence to go with me, to be with me. Exodus thirty-three, fifteen. You can read that. David, the psalmist, encourages us to come before his presence with thanksgiving. Psalms 95, verse 2. And to come before his presence with singing. Psalm 100, verse 2. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All ye lands serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. God wants us to enjoy coming into his presence. When you're not right with God, the presence of God is a dreadful and scary thing. But when you get saved, the presence of God is a wonderful thing. It is so wonderful that you long to be in this presence. This world that we live in. We've heard some of our brothers and sisters today already talk about how many troubles and trials that they're having. Just being in the world, in our nation, and things in their own particular life and their home. The difficulties they're going through. Things breaking down. Surgeries and all these things that people are facing. Trials that come upon us. We need the presence of God to offset that. And we need to run into His presence. Not run in the sense that carefree, but we run, we can be reverent in the presence of God. And yet, we run into His presence because that's the only security, that's the only safety, that's the only thing in life that is worthwhile is the presence of God. There's nothing like the presence of God. The presence of God is all-encompassing. Psalms 139, verse 7, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? God's presence is everywhere. There are some places that God chooses not to be, and He cannot be because of sin and unrighteousness. They threw Him out of public school, so He's not welcome there anymore. Many churches have thrown him out. They've taken the blood out of the songbook, so he's not much around there anymore. Many people in their homes, they don't acknowledge God, so he's not around there. But God is everywhere. You cannot shut out the presence of God. You cannot run. You cannot hide. The presence of God is everywhere, but those who know and serve him enjoy his presence like others cannot. Because they don't know the Lord. Even though God is everywhere, and He lives way up there in heaven, and He's coming back to get us, His presence is has characteristics. His presence has characteristics that we're going to talk about. This message takes a look at some of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Among the many scriptures we could use, let us stick with the conversation Jesus had with his disciples in the upper room concerning the coming ministry and presence of the Holy Ghost. John chapter 14, verses 16 through 18. Jesus begins to talk to his disciples about someone who would be with them. He is with them now, but he's going away and he's talking to them about someone that They haven't talked about much before, but he's talking to them about this special comforter, this special Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit that will be with them. He says, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter, paracletum, one who would be with you, one who would be there that he may abide with you forever. He will not be like me, who is only going to be with you a short time, but He will abide with you forever. One of the most glorious things about the presence of God and the characteristic about His presence is that He abides with us. 
He doesn't just come and go like the manifestation of the Spirit did in the Old Testament. But He is constantly abiding. Even though He does not manifest Himself constantly, and we may not feel His presence and His Spirit constantly, Many of us would like to, and we say we would like to, but our bodies that we have now could not stand it all the time. And so he comes and goes, as it were, but he really doesn't go anywhere. It's just that we are not aware of his manifest presence all the time. And though his manifest presence may manifest itself at certain times, he doesn't just come and go like he did in the Old Testament. Because the scripture says right here that he will abide with us forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The characteristic of truth. We don't have to guess and think so, maybe so, hope so, that we might be on to the right thing. No, it's no might be on to the right thing. We know that we have the truth. Because He is the Spirit of truth. When you have the presence of God in your life, you know that you have the truth. You know that He is the Spirit of truth. The Spirit of truth will not guide you into error. The Spirit of truth will not produce error in your life. We have enough error and faultiness just because we're human. But He leads us and guides us because He is the Spirit of truth. The world cannot receive Him. The only way they can receive Him is to get right with God, and then they won't be in the sinful world anymore. They'll be in the kingdom of God themselves. But in their present condition, they cannot receive Him because they do not know Him. But you know Him because He dwells with you and shall be in you. A glorious thing about the Spirit of God is that He dwells in every born-again believer. There are many who are not baptized in the Holy Ghost yet, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, but every born-again believer has the Holy Spirit dwelling in their life. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So the very fact that we have the presence of God in dwelling in our vessel says that we belong to Christ. He is with you, and He was with the disciples, but He shall be in you, and He is in us now that Christ has gone to the cross, He's been buried and resurrected, and because Christ is resurrected and glorified, and the Holy Ghost has come on the day of Pentecost, He's been here ever since, and He indwells every born-again believer. Jesus says, I will not leave you, and the word is, afeso, I will not leave you, It also means let go or permit. I will not let you go. I will not permit you to be comfortless. I will not allow you to be comfortless. Orphanos. And that's the word that we get our word orphan from. Orphanos. I will not allow you. I will not permit you to be orphans. Now, there's nothing wrong with being an orphan. That is, a child cannot help that they are an orphan. No one wants to see someone without a father, without a mother, without someone to take care of them. And Jesus is saying to us, I am not going to allow my people to be orphans, to be comfortless. I am not going to permit you to be without somebody to take care of you. And that's why I am giving you and sending you, the Father was sending you this special Holy Ghost, this special comforter. I will come to you. How is he going to come to us? He comes to us through the presence and power of the Holy Ghost. In verse 26 of John 14, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and he will bring all things to your remembrance. Hupo Manes said, I will bring all things to your remembrance. That word, Hupo Manes, I quietly remind as in putting in one's own memory or mind. When he says, I will bring these things to your remembrance. 
I will quietly put them in your mind, in your memory. Quietly remind you. It's so much better to be quietly reminded than it is to be rebuked, isn't it? Most married men don't like to be rebuked. But it's good to have a wonderful wife who will quietly remind you every once in a while, uh, boy, you need to do so and so. Use that dentine, you know, all this good stuff. Pick your socks up. Don't rebuke us, just gently remind us. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. He will teach you. Every one of us has a built in teacher, built into us. The child of God does. We don't have to be stupid all our life. We don't have to go on in darkness. He's called us in the light. And every one of us has a built-in teacher. We have a tutor. Most folks like us couldn't afford a tutor. But God's given us one free of charge. Says right here, He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. He will put it in your mind. He will put it in your memory. In one's own memory. He will bring all things to your remembrance. We talk about when you get a little older, you can't remember as you should. But the child of God has more than just a senile memory problem. The child of God, if we're not careful and get away from the presence of God, we will have a problem of remembering the spiritual things in the Word of God as we should. And it takes the Holy Ghost to remind us of what Jesus has said to us. I will bring these things to your remembrance whatsoever Jesus has said unto us. Whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Ghost, the presence of God, the characteristic of the presence of God is that He will teach us and He will bring these things to our remembrance. He will show us. In chapter 15, verse 26, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, He shall testify of me. Maturesai. He will testify. He will give witness of me. The Spirit of God gives witness in our life that this is Jesus Christ. This is the truth of God's Word. We need assurance. And He gives that assurance. He gives that testimony. When the Holy Ghost comes, He will testify of me. And that gives us more assurance to know that Jesus is not here in the body anymore, but He's not left us alone because we have this wonderful Holy Ghost, wonderful Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, who gives testimony of Christ. He will testify of me. Chapter 16, verses 7, and it should be on your papers, 7 through 15. I think it says 7 through 11. I was thinking about 7-Eleven getting me an icy from 7-Eleven, I reckon. It should be 7 through 15. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient, highly necessary for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove. That word is elegzai. He will reprove. He will convince or convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He will convince, He will reprove, He will convict. Praise God for the presence of the Holy Ghost in this world. Because we've got some ignoramuses, we've got some fruitcakes out there. And if it wasn't for the restrainer, if it wasn't for the presence of God, if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, we would be in one heap of trouble. Praise God. (laughs) He convicts us. Even as Christians, he says, "Uh uh-uh, we don't want to say that, do we? And when we neglect the Holy Spirit and we say like Red Skelton, Mama told me not to do it, I'm going to do it anyway, we get in really a whole lot of trouble. You don't need to neglect Him. You don't need to neglect the Holy Spirit because He's trying to check you. He's trying to help you. He will reprove, He will convince, He will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on Me. That is the greatest sin in the world, by the way. It's not liquor and drinking and women and men and homo and all that. Even abortion. The biggest sin in the world is that people do not believe on Jesus. 
And when you believe on Him, He straightens all this other stuff out. The Holy Ghost comes into your life. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. And He has gone to His Father and we can't see Him anymore physically. But He's gone to His Father and now the ball's in our court. What are we going to do? He came all the way. He did what He was supposed to do. He lived in this world of sin. He didn't live in sin, but He lived in the world of sin and He did not sin. And so He showed us that we could do it by His power. And He did all the miracles and He did all the wonderful things that He did. And now He's gone to the cross and they've crucified Him. He's been buried and dead and buried and resurrected. Now He's gone back to heaven and He's done all He can do. And now the ball's in our court. What are we going to do? Are we going to believe on Him? Are we going to let the Holy Ghost come into our life? Are we going to keep on walking our own way and die in darkness and go to hell? I go to my Father, you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. He's already judged. The sentence hasn't been carried all the way out yet. But you don't need to serve the devil because if you do, you're serving someone who's already been judged. You're serving a defeated foe when you serve Satan. You don't even need to listen to him because when you listen to him, you're listening to somebody who's already been put under your feet by the power of God. Don't waste your energy talking to him. You don't need to talk to him. I know sometimes you need to tell him to get out and all that. And we open our door and say, get out of our house, Satan. No, I'm not talking to you, son. I'm not talking to you, cat, either. I'm talking to the real devil. And we do that sometimes. But actually, we don't need to talk to him. Why do you want to talk to him? Do you know when Jesus cast the demons out of people, you know what he said? He could have just said, come on out, get out. But he didn't. You know what he said first? He said, hold your peace. And come out. Why did he say that? He could have just said come out. Why did he say hold your peace and come out? Because he don't want them talking. He just cast them out. They still be talking. They don't have a body to talk through. But they still causing trouble. But when Jesus said hold your peace and come out. They can't do anything. And when he casts a demon out. He says hold your peace and come out. You don't need to spend your energy talking to him or listening to him because he hasn't anything else to say to you anymore because you're no longer under his jurisdiction. Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. He wants to talk. And people that think that Jesus is no longer speaking to the church. We have the Bible. We have the Holy Spirit. So Jesus doesn't speak. All right? Just because God wrote a book, that doesn't mean He's not speaking anymore. God still speaks to His church. Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. Hudegesai. He will guide you. Hudegesai means to guide. It means to show the way. Don't just say, go this way. Because if you go to Henderson and you ask directions, they say, go this way, you go that way. But when you go that way, you should have went this way because you don't know which way you're going. No, that's not good enough. Don't tell me to go that way. Because when you've been married a long time and you say, go that way, you're going to say, now, did he mean left or right? Now, the Holy Spirit will guide you, not just telling you where to go and telling you what to do, but He will guide you. He will guide you to show you the way. He will show you the way to go. He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak. He will speak to you from God's Word. He will speak to you the Word of God, and He will show you which way to go. You read your Bible, that Logos Word. And I speak to you now the Rema Word. The Rema Word of God. The Holy Spirit guides us. And He will show us the way to go. What a wonderful characteristic of the presence of God. He will show you things to come. This word show. Anangelai. It also means to announce in detail, to declare, to report. He will show you things to come. That's not just looking up in the sky and seeing a star and saying, oh, I better do this. No, God has more confirmation than that. He doesn't want you to follow a shooting star or a falling star. You don't need to follow a falling star. You need to follow the star of the star of David, the bright and morning star, the one who's still living. 
That's the star we need to follow. The Holy Ghost will announce to us in detail. And if we can't hear Him announcing in detail, that's our problem. We're not tuned into the channel sometimes like we ought to be. Got too much interference. Our antennas put down. Radio's turned down too low. Sometimes we're even on the wrong channel. That's why we can't hear Him. You can't hear Him when you're listening to Hollywood and Hollywood. And Tuned into the wrong thing. You're on the Facebook and in the wrong channel. There's nothing wrong with being on Facebook. But you know there's a lot of contamination on there. Just like it is on radio, television, internet. But the Holy Ghost will show you. Anangeli. He will show you. Announce to you in detail. He will declare to you. He will report to you things that are coming. He will show you. He shall glorify me, Jesus said, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it. That's the same word, anangeli. He will show it unto you. That word anangeli is a Greek word. It's close to the word for message. It's close to the word for the gospel, uangelan. It's all about speaking. We think about the Holy Spirit showing us like you show somebody a picture. You show them something on your phone. But He speaks to us. Thank God that He speaks to us. So we're not left here alone to have nobody to talk to us. And I'm talking to people today who are widows. I'm talking to people who are widowers. And your spouse is gone. And your children are gone. And you don't have anyone to talk to. And when you get around people at church, we say, My Lord, what's wrong with them? Because I ain't got nobody to talk to. And they get around us and they don't know when to shut up. But the problem is you don't have anybody to talk to, but you do have somebody to talk to. You have somebody that will talk to you. The Holy Ghost will talk to you in the middle of the night when nobody else is there. Amen. Praise God. He will show you things to come. And the word here is the same. He will receive of mine and shall show it, declare it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine. And that expression, take of mine. Ek to emu lambani. Lambani means to take. And ek is out of or from. To emu means mine. He will actually take out of the things of mine and show them unto you. Praise God. We have a Holy Ghost who will take the very things of the Father and the Son and reveal them to us. Anangeli. He will show them to us. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says that you will receive power. Dunamim. Power. Dunamis. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. What a wonderful power of God. This same power of God is available for the whole church, is available. But when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you have the power and the fullness of God to witness for Christ like never before. What about this presence? How do I get into this fullness and this real presence of God? Psalm twenty-seven, fourteen says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. It's not just buying a special book or a CD. It's not going to a certain class or seminar, although these things certainly may help you. But everybody has equal ground when it comes to getting in on the presence of God. And that is we can all do the same thing. We can wait on God. There's no shortcut. There's no magic around it. You've got to wait on God to have the presence of God upon your life like He wants you to have. Every believer has the Spirit and presence of God. But to get in on all these characteristics of the presence of the Spirit of God, we have to wait on God. Wait on the Lord. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Presence, characteristics. These things that God has given us to show us and to manifest His presence. And we can say like the song says, Adam and Eve had it in the beginning and we lost it. But what we lost in Adam, we gained in Christ. 
Now we have the same thing that they had, even more so. He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He lets me know I'm His very own. In the garden, I walk with Him, and I talk with Him. And Mr. Andy said, I'm so glad that I found my name in a song. Somebody said, how in the world is that? He said, well, it says it right here. Andy walks with me, Andy talks with me. (laughs) And he lets me know I'm his very own. Father, I'm so thankful for the presence of God. Thank you for the presence of the Father. Thank you for the presence of the Son. And thank you that it all culminates in the presence of the mighty Holy Ghost. Lord, I thank you that your Spirit is with us. He's been here since the day of Pentecost. And your Scripture says he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And we know that's true because he's still with us today. Thousands of years later, the Holy Ghost never has left the body of Christ. Never has left an individual believer who will be serious about loving God and serving him. And I praise you, Lord, for this wonderful Holy Spirit who is given to us in Jesus' name. I pray that many people will be saved, many people will be born again, and many people would enjoy the presence of God. In Jesus' name, amen. The preceding message has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries. 